Hello, this is David Heine, and today we're at Sotheby's, the vulnerable old auction house. And with us today is Helene van der Veen, who is going to talk about their very impressive spring painting sale. Uh, first of all, maybe I could ask you, Helene, a little about uh, the history of Sotheby's, uh, both here and uh, in London. Yes. Sotheby's was founded in 1744 in England as a fine book auctioneer and it has developed over the years in a very large international uh, auction house of, um, of great fame, I might add. And um, here in Amsterdam, uh, Sotheby's um, got a foot on the ground, as they say in Dutch, in 1975, when they took over the much older, or well, not exactly much older, but the, the old Dutch auctioneer, Mac van Wij. And Mac van Wij is, um, an Amst was an Amsterdam auctioneer uh, with you know, uh, great local fame. And they were taken over in 1975 when they became part of Sotheby's International. And that was actually um, the beginning of Sotheby's Amsterdam. So how does uh, Sotheby's Amsterdam differ from, let's say, the London or New York office? Um, Sotheby's tries to place uh, pieces of art there where they sell best. And London and New York are sale rooms where they sell the international pieces of art, uh, which appeal to a very broad uh, international audience. Sotheby's Amsterdam uh, focuses it on the Northern European markets. So that would be Holland, Belgium, um, a part of Northern Germany, and the Scandinavian countries. So you're in the process right now of preparing yourself for the uh, spring sale, a very busy time here yeah. at the auction house, I can tell. Could you tell me how does a, a, a very impressive collection like this come together, and where are your sources? Right. Um, the Spring Painting Sale is a sale um, which aims at a, a younger collector and it offers pieces of art uh, in a range from 1,000 to 15,000 guilders, uh, give or take. And um, we, we get our paintings from uh, private people who would like to sell a piece of art, uh, maybe to buy something, uh, something else instead. Uh, we get works from dealers who like to offer uh, pieces. And um, sometimes uh, people pass away, and um, how do you say that? Uh, the, uh, the the people who must um, sorry, so I, can I cut? Oh, sometimes the people who uh, stay behind, they um, they don't particularly like a painting, and then they they sell it. So it comes from various sources. And you have a special kind of painting that is uh, included in this, or a special school of painting that is yes. uh, included here. Could you yeah. talk about that a little bit? Yes, that's right. Um, we have a very nice collection of paintings from painters by the Leidse School, from the Leidse School. And uh, the Leidse School is very closely related to the Hague School of Paintings. Um, the painters uh, in this movement liked to paint outside, en plein air actually, uh, the way the Barbizon painters uh, did their work. And um, it's closely related in tone and in color and in their themes uh, from the Hague School painters, but it's more intimate and it's, it's really, it's got a more sort of cozy atmosphere. And um, the protagonists of, these move, of this movement are um, Chris van der Wind, Arend Jan van Drieste and another painter called Willem van der Nat. And they each had their own speciality. Uh, Chris van der Wind was very good at still lives and a really picturesque, cozy little farmyard. Uh, Willem van der Nat was good at animals in really vibrant, broad brushstrokes. And Arend Jan van Driesten did landscapes. And actually, he is the one who is the most closely related to the Hague School. Now, I noticed in viewing your, your catalog that you cover a, a wide range of paintings and yes. a wide range of yeah. uh, periods and generations. Uh, could you talk about the rest of the collection and how many paintings are there actually in this sale? Ah, well, we have in total 908 lots, which include um, old master paintings and old master drawings, 19th century paintings, drawings, and watercolors, and we have modern and contemporary paintings and also prints. 
So it's a very wide range, and we really want to offer something for everybody. That's, that's the whole idea behind the sale. Yeah. So again, getting back to the, the bidders themselves, yeah. you were saying that this was for a younger, uh, less affluent uh, clientele, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Who are the bidders that come to South of East? Um, it, it, you can say that it differs widely. It, it really varies. Um, there are absolutely passionate collectors um, who really, uh, if they see something that they really like, they will go to any length to get it. Um, we have dealers, of course, who, uh, yeah, who, who also come to us uh, to buy and sell. Um, it, it's a very wide, uh, wide range of people, one can say. Yeah. Now today we were fortunate enough to come during the viewing, and there were a lot of people looking around. How does the whole process work? I mean, from the beginning to to the end, yes. right? Um, we start with. Um, they call it business getting, so we have to, 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 to get all the paintings uh, for a sale together. Sometimes people come to us because they know us and sometimes uh, we have to go out and, and um, see whether people want to sell. We have, um, they call it valuation days in the country where we go um, to places all over Holland and uh, so, so we can reach people better because not everybody is able to come to Amsterdam. And we give valuations and we can talk to people and uh, so people can get a better idea of what sort of beast is and sometimes then they decide to consign. Many people also come here and offer their collections for sale. And then what we do is uh, we have to catalog it. So we have to make a description uh, for the catalog so that people can read in our catalog what something is. Uh, huh? So what the medium is and whether or not it is signed and the size etc etc. We also photograph it. We have an in-house studio, uh, which is um, in, in our building. So we catalog it, we photograph it, and uh, then we uh, have to um, do our viewing. So we have to uh, make sure that all the paintings that you see here in this room find their own place and um, that every, everything is exhibited as well as possible. Then during viewing days, people can come and look at uh, the paintings and the watercolors and uh, verify for themselves whether they like it or not. If, if uh, everything goes well, then they've seen it first in the catalog and then they come here and then they, they see the paintings themselves. And then um, the day of the auction, then, then that's the big day really, when everything is going to be, um, to, when everything is going to be shown and it's going to be uh, sold, hopefully. <laughs> Now, I've, I've noticed in the catalog also that uh, you have an evaluation, a, an ec an something estimate. of an estimate or yeah. an expectation of a price. Yeah. How yeah. does that come about? Um, when you first see a painting, you look, you, you look at what it represents. And if it's a really lovely picture, you know, then that's the first, that's the first okay. Um, you look, obviously, who the painter is. Um, you look at the condition of a painting. Is, has the canvas been relined? Yes or no? Is there a cracular? Have there been retouches? Um, is, is the condition on a whole, is it good? Um, sometimes something from a, from a special period is, is good. Sometime, sometime, sometimes something is interesting because it's topographically interesting. You can see it's, it's like Amsterdam or it's a special place in The Hague. And of course, you have to look at what what work what similar works sell for. I mean, and that, but that is only a rough guideline. I mean, you have to you have to value each picture on its own merits, but you can't escape from the market. So, if if I particularly like one painting, I still have to look at what similar paintings from this painter have done before and what sort of prices they fetch because I have to make sure that they somehow relate, because otherwise the chance is big that, you know, if I make a much higher estimate, that it won't sell. So you have to make sure that, it's, that it sort of goes in the same line. But then again, an estimate can be, you know, completely overthrown during a sale. And then you can, you know, be proven um, too modest, for example, if something makes a beautiful price. I've, uh, I've seen that happen where sometimes it exceeds it by millions. How, how does that happen? Um, how does that happen? Obviously you have to have several people who are really keen, who really want that picture and who have really set their hearts on it. For example, we had in our, 
in our 19th century painting sale last October. We had a beautiful painting by B.C. Cuckook, which was estimated uh, for several hundred thousand guilders. But it was a beautiful painting, really beautiful, which was something that doesn't come on the market very often. I mean, B.C. Cuckook is the father of Dutch Romanticism, and his works generally are expensive. I mean, he's, he's just not cheap. But this was such a wonderful painting, beautifully balanced, a beautiful composition. The colors were beautiful, the condition was good. It was a gem. And if people see a gem, then they react to it. And especially now, because 19th century paintings in Amsterdam, they really sell quite well. The market's very strong at the moment. So sometimes something magic really happens, and then you get this beautiful reaction. And it's, in the end, it sold for 1.1 million, which was we were all really enthusiastic about that, obviously. But, th but that sometimes happens, yeah. Speaking of the money angle, mm -hmm. what, what does, how does that exactly work? I mean, is it, a, is it a relationship between you and the client, or you and the buyer? Um, um, the auction house gets its commission from... Yeah, from obviously. Auction houses uh, charge commission, which, which is 10% uh, as a sort of ground rule. Uh, we do have a gliding scale. For example, if you sell for, for 6 million, you sort of pay less commission. But, I mean, in general, it's, it's 10%. But if you make an estimate for a picture, you make an estimate which, you know, which should, sh should create the highest price. The point is, it's, it's all very often it's a fine line. If you estimate something too high, uh, if, you, if you value something too high, then the chance that it doesn't sell you know, becomes increasingly big. So what you do try to do is you try to... to to value something for, for just the right price, that, which is the price in which you interested buyers, potential buyers should, should get interested if they see something, okay, that, that's a good price. Because if you put it way too high, then they say, Pff, you know, ha, uh, that's way too high, I'm not going to bid. On the other side, you have to make sure that your consigner is also ha is, is happy and gets a good price. Um, so you can't make it too low because that's obviously not in the interest of the consigner. So we really have to please both parties and, and that's a fine line but it's the art of being a good um, expert I think. So what's hot right now in Amsterdam? In Amsterdam what's hot right now is 19th century paintings. Yeah, We've seen uh, a tremendous development in the last two and a half years. I mean prices have, have doubled and tripled even especially top quality works that is something that sells really well especially the well, dutch romanticism and dutch impressionism uh, which is isaac israels and breitner um have really been they've really been how do you say that re 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 uh, appreciated if you see for example that the german and french romanticism internationally they make really high prices um, Whereas Dutch Romanticism always stayed behind a bit. What you can see now is that they've sort of come on the same price level as their French and German counterparts. So we have Schelfhout and Bissi Kukuk and um, many other Romantic painters that now they sell like hotcakes, basically. And the same goes for Dutch Impressionism. Um, Isaac Israels, like I said, Breitner, but also painters like Ernst Senius, um, who makes, for example, beautiful, beautiful uh, beach scapes and uh, beautiful town scenes, beautiful watercolors. Um, that does really well right now. That is really something that uh, in the last two years has developed itself in an incredibly strong market, high prices they fetch. So anyone can come to these auctions? Yes, or absolutely. Or is it a restricted no, no. clientele? No, no, it's a public auction. So it's a public sale, so everybody is welcome. When the auction starts, how does that go? Um, that's always very nice, because there's always a moment of sort of a palpable sensation of now it's going to happen. That's very nice. Um, the auctioneer opens the sale and starts with the first lot, which is shown. And um, then he starts going. He... Um, he, he, he starts with the ask price and then people from the audience and on the telephone can bid. Sometimes he has a commission bid in his book, which means that, f uh, let's say, um, you would like to buy a painting, but you can't be on the actual sale. Um, 
but you know in your heart that you just want to, to spend like amount X. And then you say to the auctioneer, um, you can uh, write my bid in your book. I want to bid until amount X, and, um, but not more. And if you can get it for less, I can get, hey, I, you, you get it for less. So that is what they call commission bid, which is written in the book. So you can bid really on three, in three ways. And um, well, that starts to happen then on the sale. And uh, people call in, or we, ha we call them, but you know, they can bid via the telephone and in the room. I've often heard of these mysterious bidders on the phone. Yeah. Do you check these people out beforehand? Yeah, or? sometimes. Yeah, if they, if they bid for a huge amount, we do credit checks. Yeah. Yeah, but they do exist. <laughs> well, often yeah. I read these four and five, forty million dollar sales. You, you hear about it was a mysterious buyer on the phone. Yeah. Are these museums or are these individuals? Sometimes, sometimes they're museums, and sometimes they're just uh, private clients who would rather stay anonymous. Obviously, everybody stays anonymous uh, with us, but buying on the phone is the most anonymous way uh, of buying. That's right, yeah. Also must throw an element of uh, uh, adversary to the one that's live there, that this mysterious phone call keeps bidding against him. Yeah, but I mean, th but that's part of the art of, of auctioneering. I mean, yeah, sometimes you've got a, an adversary and um, that is uh, good for the consigner, obviously. And um, it's also, par you know, the part which makes it exciting that sometimes you get something and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Besides the, the spring painting sale, you also sell other things here during the year. What? What do you uh, everything, handle? Everything, basically everything. Uh, all beautiful things um, pass our hammer. Uh, we sell jewelry, silver, uh, modern and contemporary art, old master paintings, um, Chinese and Japanese uh, porcelain works of art, European ceramics, furniture, sculpture, clocks and watches. Well, it's almost, you name it, we've got it. <laughs> almost. But. Um, there, yeah, there's really a wide variety and also a wide price range. So, yeah, from, from a thousand to, um, you name it, to a million guilders. Well, I was encouraged when I read the catalog, there were a few in there for three or four hundred. I know, yeah, that's very nice. Well, there's something for everyone, yeah. So, maybe now we could uh, talk about a few of the paintings. What do we'd yes. like to do is to follow five of these paintings through the auction itself. Yeah. So, if you could uh, describe a few. There's two here on the table. Maybe yeah. You, uh, you could uh, talk about... Uh, so shall I start with the, the first Guur, which is quite nice. This is a lovely little stable interior by uh, Wouteris Verschuur. And Wouteris Verschuur is one of the Dutch Romantic painters that, um, have, uh, that, that have had such tremendous success in the last two and a half years. I mean, prices for his work have doubled and sometimes tripled, especially for large works. Uh, we saw it also in our last uh, October sale, uh, 19th century paintings. We sold... Um, several works by his hand for half a million guilders, which used to be two years ago, and even maybe half that. So he's one of the painters that really has, yeah, you can say tripled his prices. This is a very lovely small uh, panel, uh, which is estimated for seven to 10,000 guilders, which is a reasonable estimate given the small size of this painting. But, um, I like it very much, I have to say, because it has such a lovely, intimate atmosphere. And he's very famous for painting horses. And you can see that even on this scale, he, he does that fantastically. All right. That will be our first one. Um, now we'll take this other lovely, small little... Yeah, this is so nice. Now these are yeah. oil paintings? Yeah, these are oil, oil paintings, oil on panel. That's the way they're described in the catalog. This is by uh, Petrus Kiers. And Petrus Kiers is well known for his candlelight scenes. And I have to say this, this is a personal favorite of mine because even on this very small scale, he's managed to create an intimate atmosphere, which is absolutely delightful, I think, the way that the candle reflects in her face. 
and the way that um, the one young lady shows the letter to the other one. I think it's a lovely little scene, and I think it's uh, you know a sign of great master, uh, great mastery of the art if you know how to to depict that on such a small scale. What is this? What is this one going to be estimated at? It's estimated at. Um, may I have a look in the catalogue? Because I'm not quite sure anymore. Uh, roughly. I think it was four to six thousand guilders. Now I notice with this one, it's not framed. Are the frames an important part of uh, the presentation? Um, well, we never value a painting uh, by the frame. So, so you know, if, if it doesn't have a frame, I mean, it doesn't really has an influence on our valuation. But um, I mean, it. it uh, yeah, sometimes people don't like the frame. For example, with, with other paintings that they say, no, we. we we just want to put another frame. Sometimes the frame can really complement a painting, but it's not something that we take into account when we do evaluation. We purely value the picture and not the frame. I remember some years back, the Rijksmuseum had a show yeah. in which they had yeah. the artists who painted the frames also. Mm -hmm. In that case, yeah. maybe uh, an exception? In that case, an exception, when the frame is really an integral part of the, pain, of the painting, of the work of art, yes, then it, it really does matter. But in these cases, I mean, the frame is just an, an addition, really, to the painting. I mean, it's not something that's really part of it. You don't do any of the framing yourself, then? No, we don't. No, we don't. We just focus on the works of art. So now we're going to um, have a look at the other three paintings. Okay. This is uh, a painting by Henri van Zebe, and this is also the painting which is on the cover of our catalogue. And um, it depicts the orphans from um, the Burger Weeshuis in Leiden. And uh, Henri van Zebe was actually a Belgian painter who studied at the Hague Academy. And he was very much influenced by Hubertus van Hove, who was also a 19th century painter, who painted in the style of the 17th century. And that is something that we also see here. It is painted in uh, by the end of the 19th century. But as you can see from the dress of the people, it's based on 17th century pictures. Now what I particularly liked in this painting is that um, the orphans that he has painted, especially these two in the foreground, look directly at the painter. And that is something that makes it very much 19th century and not 17th century. Those girls in the foreground connect directly with uh, the person who paints them. And that is something that really, I think, gives it a sort of moving touch. And it's really very direct and they communicate very much with the viewer. And Right. And um, because of this directness, we thought that it would be nice to have it on the cover of the catalogue because it's, it sort of gives you a connection, we hope. Um, so far for this painting. These will be the three paintings that on Tuesday morning we will be following at the Spring Painting Sale Auction. We will take you inside the famous Sotheby's Auction House on the Roken and show you just exactly how an auction works. This is an auctioneer's announcement. The auctioneer may open the bidding on any lot by placing a bid on behalf of the seller. The auctioneer may further bid on behalf of the seller up to the amount of the reserve by placing responsive or consecutive bids for a lot. So in trading was out to follow, two lots had been withdrawn, lot 111 and 2017, lot 111 and 217. And I'd rather this by the glance, in the fall, the fact that it was after the in the catalogus. But here with lot number 8, lot number 1, German school, 
Ja, en dan moet u zeggen 1500 gulden. 1600, 1700, het 1700 gulden, 700 gulden, niet meer dan 1700, 1700 gulden, het 1700. Niemand meer dan 1700 gulden, 1700 gulden. Niemand. 1700 van zo. 500, 2800, 3000 gulden. Dan is je bitter. 3000 gulden, merk boven. 3200, 3400. 3600, tegen zit de volgende. 6700 gulden, achterin zijn al rechts. Niemand meer dan 3600, rechts achterin. 3800, 4000. 4200, 4500. 4800, 5000. 5000 gulden staan achterin. 5000 gulden, niemand meer dan 5000. 5, 7, 9. 5000 gulden. 5, 8, 8. Dank u wel. 8 ja, en daar is hiervoor geboden een cifferblok van 6.000, gulden. Commission bidder at 7.000 gulden. 7.000 gulden. Niemand meer dan 7.000. Cifferblok. 7.000 gulden. 7.500, 8.000. 7.000 gulden. 7.500. 9.510.000. 7 mei, 10.000 gulden. Zit er weer 10.000 gulden. Niemand meer dan 10.000. Hier geboden. Niemand. 10.000, commissie. Loop de 177. Nou, die van 7. Veel belangstelling voor dit loop. En het hoogste cifferbod is. 6.500, 7.500 gulden. Commission bidder at 7.500. Niemand meer dan 7.500. 7.500 gulden. 8.000, welke 10? 8.500. 8.500 gulden. Als dit bemerk, 8000, 9.000, 9.500. 9.500 gulden. Als dit bemerk, commission. 10.000, 11.000. Dan zeker mij, 11.000 gulden. Niemand meer dan 11.000 gulden. Commission bidder at 11.000 gulden. 12.000, 13.000. Zeker bij mij, 13.000 gulden. Niemand meer dan 13.000 gulden. 13.500, 14.000. Dan zeker bij mij. Weet u het zeker? 14.000 gulden. Zit het boven mij? Niemand meer dan 14.000 gulden. Geen telefoons meer. 14.000, commissie. 